This is Jason Newton, welcoming you to a introduction to the Old Connecticut Path. And I'm here in Waters Farm in West Sutton, Massachusetts, located along the Old Connecticut Path. This project started as a family history project to trace the route followed by my ancestors, Thomas and Susanna Hooker and their children, and Roger Newton in their travels from Cambridge to Hartford, Connecticut in 1636 and 1640. Along the way, I've learned that the path still remains and there are parts of it that provide special wilderness experience that allow you to feel the wilderness as they might have experienced it so long ago. The old Connecticut path was the great trail of the native peoples linking the Massachusetts Nipmuc and Tunxis tribes on a journey from the Mass Bay to the Connecticut Valley. In 1630, a delegation of chieftains followed the Connecticut path from Hartford to Boston for the purpose of inviting the English to come and establish settlements in the Connecticut Valley. The westward migration began in earnest in 1635 and 1636 when parties traveled from the Mass Bay along the old Connecticut path to the Connecticut Valley to establish the towns of Windsor, Wethersfield, and Hartford. The most famous migration was that of the congregation led by Thomas Hooker from Cambridge across the old Connecticut path to establish Hartford in 1636. The route they followed went from native village to native village and offered the travelers a place to rest where they could take advantage of the hospitality of the native people. During the period from 1640 to 1680, Reverend John Elliot of Roxbury, Mass, traveled along the old Connecticut path and established praying Indian villages along the path. The locations of the praying villages established by John Elliot and the record of travels along the old Connecticut path by Daniel Gookin, Commissioner of Indian Affairs, gives us markers of where the old Connecticut path followed that we can use today to identify the route. My journey in rediscovering the old Connecticut path has been guided by an attempt to answer three important questions. Can the route of the old Connecticut path be reconnected all the way from Cambridge to Hartford? And after 375 years of human development, and are there still wild places along the path where it's possible to experience the wilderness as it might have been during the migration of the earliest travelers? And finally, are there still artifacts left by the earliest travelers and settlers that mark their passage along the old Connecticut path? The answer I've found is a resounding yes to each of the questions. And we'll take opportunities to show you what has been found so that you can experience it for yourself. Now the old Connecticut path is not just part of my family's story, but it's the story, part of the family story of many who are descendants of those who traveled from the Mass Bay to settle in the Connecticut Valley. And this was truly one of the first westward expansion routes followed by the pioneers in the early 1600s. So I hope you'll join me as we follow the old Connecticut path. You are invited to join me in rediscovering the old Connecticut path. Come along with me by video and by slides and animations to see the old Connecticut path at the ground level get out to walk and experience the wilderness as it may have been seen by those who traveled along the old path and help to preserve this important part of our national heritage. Visit the Old Connecticut Path website for more information.